and I see the Spirit of God in you. Just close your eyes a second here. Mm. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. never going to be the same after today because I see spirits in here growing So the foundation of the world is created by what? The fear of death. So in Hebrews chapter 2, we're going to look at verse 9 first. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, might taste death for just me. Everyone, everyone he tasted death for. So every creature, every person born on this planet, he's tasted what your greatest fear is. And he's still standing. And he's still ruling. Verse 13. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, here am I and the children whom God has given me. Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself, that's Jesus, likewise shared in the same that through death he might destroy, say destroy, him who had the power of death, that is the who. Wait a minute. I thought the devil was wrecking my life. Wait a minute. The devil did that to me. Wait a minute. What's going on here? Jesus says, I destroyed the devil. So we don't have a crutch anymore, do we? <laughs> so we're recognizing now that we have the responsibility for our situations. It's not the devil that's doing it and release those who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. My, my, my. So Jesus just kicked the crutches out from all of us. He said, whatever you're afraid of, you're making it up. That's a fairy tale because it's already done. Maybe you just don't want to believe it. What we accept, believe, and surrender to is our state of being. That state of being creates our personal reality. Your personality creates your personal reality. So if your personal reality has you as a victim, has you as someone who's been abandoned, has you as someone who's been stolen from, poor, needy, whatever, if that's your personal reality, that's because of what you believe. So the person that's listening to me today can't blame your mother, can't blame your father, can't blame anybody, but who? That's the first step to freedom, that recognition. Now, the consciousness that I'm talking about is just another word for spiritual awakening. When you're spiritually awake, that means you're conscious of what you're thinking, what you're believing, what you're sounding like, what you're doing, what your thoughts. When you're conscious of it, you've entered into that program 
that most people function under. Remember I said you wake up in the morning, you go to the bathroom, you look at your WhatsApp, you take a picture of your feet, you post it. Now you're connected to everybody in your world. So when you're conscious that you're not in your program, you're back, you go back into the, what they call the back door. You can now change that program. You don't change it yourself. But because you're spiritually conscious, the Spirit of God makes you aware of what you're doing. He says, he says I'm taking care of you. you got to trust me. And when we are conscious, when we are in the Spirit, He goes into our unconscious programs and starts making us aware of our daily habits, our daily reactions to situations around us. When we become conscious of how we respond to somebody who disagrees with us, cuts us off in traffic, does this, does that, when we're conscious of that, he says, wow, now you're paying attention. Now I can change the way you respond to your external environment and start making you aware of what I'm doing internally. Because what he does internally affects the external. It's not the other way around. Because your vibrational level starts to vibrate at a different frequency. And you start moving outside of that comfort range, outside of that predictable range, outside of that controllable range, into a place where you're not familiar. But if you're not scared, if your heartbeats aren't going up, he can show you something you never seen. And that just gives you so much peace, so much joy, so much appreciation for the, his love. Because that's love doing that. He loves you so much, he doesn't want to leave you the way you are. He loves you, folks. And that love is what brings us to a place where we can recognize how much he cares. Because if we're just living at a place that we're familiar with and we're comfortable for, we're living by cliches. We know the language. We know what to do, when to do it. But that gives us control. That doesn't give him control. The more freedom we can show him by abandoning ourselves to what we know, the greater he'll take you to places you can never get by yourself. And he doesn't show you those so that you can exalt yourself. He shows you so you can humble yourself. And it's that humility that draws that spirit to you all the time. So the kingdom of God is the consciousness of Christ. The consciousness of Christ is the ability to be absolutely void of control, void of feelings. Thoughts are the language of the brain. Feelings are the language of the body. So when your thoughts and your feelings are one, you are in unison. It's that unison that is the biggest magnetic force in the physical realm. That's why Jesus could go by a blind man and he knew who was going by him. He didn't have to see him. His senses didn't have to tell him anything other than there is something more powerful than my condition in my neighborhood. And that's how the gospel is preached. Are you with me? When who you are, that magnetic force of unison between your heart and your thoughts, go by anybody that's in need, their needs are met. Because what they're crying out for is wholeness. Divine health is the memory of wholeness. Because where you came from, you were whole. And when you came down into this dimension, you became separated from that wholeness. And you started using your senses to try to get back to that wholeness, and all that did was create more separation. And then that creates more stress. And stress is more separation. And it puts out more chemistry inside of your body that creates more division. And the way you think becomes more separated. Wholeness is the place of oneness with God. 
So when you remember who you were before the foundation of the world, you're living in wholeness. You're living in oneness. You're not separating yourself from that person that doesn't dress like you, doesn't look like you, doesn't think like you. That's separation. And that's how this world foundation operates, in separation. That's why Jesus says the enemy divides. That's how he conquers. Wholeness. Wholeness. That's the word that I'm I'm hearing in my spirit. Wholeness. We have to be whole. And the minute you feel separated is the minute you're not conscious. Because wholeness doesn't operate in an automatic program. When we are programmed to believe a certain way and think a certain way, we're not conscious of wholeness. Because who we are is connected to the Spirit of God. Our spirit is connected to the Spirit of God. Every creature that Jesus tasted death for is connected to him. He bought them through his death. He paid for them through his death. So we're all connected. We're all family. That's a hard concept. So our senses want to separate us because we like to exalt ourselves. Senses gives us a feeling of superiority. It makes us feel different than someone else. Jesus wants us to feel special in him, not outside of him. When we try to feel special outside of him, we're creating division. Now you understand why denominations are such an abomination to him. So wholeness, that's the word for the day, wholeness, wholeness. Whenever you feel like you're separated You're out of that wholeness. You're out of that oneness. You're out of that peace of God. So let's unravel the victim situation for a second because I think it's important. Most times we start feeling certain ways and we're not even clear why we're feeling certain ways. But we become so accustomed to responding to situations in our environment that make us feel a certain way that we, our bodies become our unconscious mind. What does that mean? That means you don't think anymore. All of that information is now in your body. When you feel a certain way, it drives thoughts. So when people feel like they are a victim, it's because they're not being satisfied by the external environment they're in. Now, what does that mean? When I drink coffee, I get a certain feeling in my body that gives me exhilaration. Okay, that's an external feeling that makes my body feel a certain way. When a person is looking for some kind of external stimulation to make them feel a certain way, They'll go and hunt it out, and they'll find other people that are doing the same thing. Victims do that in their life. All of us have some kind of addiction we are, you know, connected to in the physical realm. So we seek it out, and we look for it. But what the Spirit of God says, if you're conscious of your reaction to these physical, external influences... I can change what gives you satisfaction. I can start bringing that satisfaction from the inside out instead of from the outside in. And then we start paying more attention to the feelings on the inside instead of what produced them from the outside. That's how we start shifting our attention from the physical to the internal. Because when our attention is on the spirit, 
you'll be amazed how time no longer becomes an issue. You see, because most of us have to get up and we have to go through a schedule every day. We have certain places we need to be, certain things we need to do. And before we even go there, we already know the feeling we're going to have from the person we're going to (laughs) meet. Am I right? You see, so, so we're already locked in a loop of already predicting how we're going to react before we even get there. That's not living in the spirit. You can still do the physical things you need to do, but you don't have to mentally be there. That's how you can have a greater effect on what you're doing in your daily life. Because physically, you're not attached to this dimension. Because we are what? Spirit. And we are craving wholeness. And wholeness means we can't be separated by what we don't have, what we want, our needs. We've got to go to the bathroom. We've got to have money. We've got, we can't be separated by that. Because once we become what it is we want, all those things are what? Added to you. That's what the kingdom says. Once you enter Christ, all those things you've been searching for outside of him will come to you. And then because they come to you, it's really easy to give it away. Because you know how to get them. <laughs> Isn't that right? You see, we're not in lack, folks. We're mentally deficient. <laughs> I, I, had a, I had a joke with my son. I said, because we used to watch the Superman comics, and he comes with that big S on his chest. You know, Superman has the big S. I said, that big S comes with every human being born into this planet. He's the three S's. He's scared, he's selfish, and he's stupid. (laughs) So we're all Superman. But we're wearing those three S's. And what, what Christ does when he makes you conscious is gives you the ability not to be attached. Because you recognize your wholeness. You recognize that you're not different from what you are judging. That's a big one. When we judge, we're putting ourselves above what we're judging. Instead of recognizing we're part, part of the whole. That's why Jesus says, don't judge. That wasn't an option. So once we start being conscious of that and start understanding how we're responding to the situation around us, he can start really changing our programs. You see, by the time you're six years old, you're already programmed in your environment. You already know what your parents think, how they behave. You already know how you're going to respond to situations because you've watched your parents do it. You've watched your siblings do it. So you're already programmed. That's why the uh, Jesuits used to tell the parents back in the 1600s, give me your child at birth and I'll show you the man at seven. They programmed them. So you have to recognize that that's your programming And then by the time you're 35, you're so comfortable with your environment that you've created from your beliefs that 70 to 90,000 thoughts a day and 90% are the same. Think of that. So you really are in a program. And that's what Christ came to break because he knows what this world system is. It's created from the foundation of this world. And the longer you are associated with this world system, the more fear you have, the more fear of death you have. 
and the more you have to wait for Jesus to do what he's already done. I destroyed the devil. I destroyed death. So our messages need to be created from that place of spiritual dimension and not the linear dimension of this 3D. Because here, you want to start and you want to finish. In the spiritual dimension, you're ever ascending. And that's the beauty of knowing Christ. He's able to surprise you every morning. Change the way you think every day. Never think you got it. Because he's there to change your mind every day. He's there to show you a new dimension of himself. He's there to show you that there's no fear in him. And the minute you exhibit that, step back and get conscious. The minute you're afraid of anything, you feel your heart race, you have thoughts of death, step back and get conscious. Because you're not that physical, material being that you see in the mirror. Father, I thank you that you are who you said you are. And that you have loved us from the beginning. And you said you would never leave us or forsake us. And we believe you. And you said you have given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And we receive it. We're not living in the fear of death anymore. We belong to the kingdom of God, and we're no longer controlled by the spirit dimension that controls us with the fear of death. That spirit has been destroyed. We're now living in the kingdom of God, and we worship you, and we change those voices that have dominated our lives. We're not listening to those lies anymore. Those lives have no substance in our life anymore. And we give you the glory for all that you've already done. And we're going to be conscious more and more, living in your spirit. In Jesus' name.